present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. <laughs> okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, July the 5th, 2014. And uh, I'm glad the big storm is over. Uh, Tropical Storm Arthur that made its way up here to New Jersey to the northeast. Uh, it's gone and uh, you know it did what tropical storms do. Uh, rough you up a little bit but it's a beautiful weekend here and uh, I hope everyone had a uh, healthy and uh, a fun filled and safe most of all safe uh, Independence Day yesterday which was uh, July 4th for the United States Independence Day um, no I did not watch any fireworks because I see them every year I watch it on TV if a firework is a firework except this one particular video that I posted was were fireworks that were uh, to be considered artistic it's it's on my Facebook page it is very interesting how they get certain perfect shapes to form when a skyrocket explodes in the sky and, and, and you have these these shapes like a perfect heart with you know solid red and whites and pinks and I don't know how they do it but it's 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 a form of art to to make that happen to make an explosion do that you know uh, there isn't a week that goes by when I don't learn new things and I'm not uh, totally amazed by new discoveries. Never too late to learn. You hear that, Republican Congress? <laughs> if you happen to be uh, naturally stupid and get elected by a bunch of morons that, are, that vote for you, it's never too late to learn. Um, but for Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman, I think it is too late. Sarah Palin saying, making a statement that Jesus uh, uh, influenced the, uh, the formation of the United States and the Constitution, the writing of the Constitution, and, and all this stuff. Oh yeah, like, like Jesus really is happy about what the Republican Party is all about. You know, oh, delusional. Continue being delusional. No, you don't have to be delusional. If she wants to believe the Bible, uh, the United States is under a curse right now. I yeah, but, but to believe that God is on the side of the teabaggers and conservatives is totally insane because it's what they're about is against what's in the That's Bible. That's right. They want to cut food stamps. This is not godly. This is not biblical. They want to give bingo. They want to give billions and billions. I'm, I'm not doing Carl Sagan. They want to give billions and billions uh, of of free money to uh, corporations, the elitists, and but, the plutocrats. But, but they don't have money to help the the veterans of the yeah, VA hospitals. Yeah, they don't have money for food stamps. They don't have yeah, money yeah. for Planned Parenthood. They don't have money yeah, for yeah. for welfare for the to help the poor. But they got billions and billions and billions and billions maybe even trillions, to give away to the fat cats, to corporations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They got money for that. Oh. Yeah. So maybe they're crazy like a fox. No, no they're crazy like what they can get away with. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're pretending. Okay. They, they have these stooges, these, uh, these corporate whores that sound stupid. You think they really are that stupid? Or, or stupid? Yes, they are, because this is not something new. This has been going on since after the Civil War. It was a period up to like 1930, where the plutocrats and the corporations got everything they wanted. You know, and there are people who Until FDR got in there. And we got the middle class raised up. Resurrected! There for are. about 40, 50 years, 60, whatever. There and are, now we're back again. Well, there are there are countless morons who do not know the definition of fascism. They still don't understand it. They, they
they lump socialism and communism and fascism in the same bucket, you know, uh, uh, or pickle barrel or whatever. These are the, the, the red state rednecks. Right. And, and some idiot posted that Ronald Reagan was voted the best all-time president that the United States ever had. I told him... He was. I told him... That was. The best... The best Republican... There were two of them. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt and Dwight D. Eisenhower. Eisenhower. <laughs> FDR. As far as FDR is concerned, he was the best because he was voted in four times. And they had to change the law to stop him. And look how fair... They love the people love that and look at and look how and look how much he got done or wanted to get done that he was stopped with the second bill of rights he was stopping doing it just like uh, uh, they they I watched a documentary about Fiorella LaGuardia former mayor of New York City of the past 1930s whatever and uh, they said he was the best all-time mayor that New York ever had he he was a uh, he got things done he. Um, Hey, he was, Mussolini had the try the buses run the trains running on time. He got things done yeah. too. I don't mean well, anything. Well, I don't. Well, I, what I mean is he got things done for the for the good of the people. Ah, well. Not for the good of the the rich. Yeah, but our country is oriented to the good of the corporations and the rich. That is okay. true. That is true, and that kind of leads up to my one big monologue topic that I will read Ooh. after I get done with the formalities. I'm sorry, I didn't realize we were on the air. <laughs> Welcome to Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, uh, the hardest-hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And I would like to formally pipe aboard with my authentic bosun's whistle my illustrious uh, co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. It happens to officially be one of the lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. Welcome aboard uh, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting, truth starship newsletter censored. How are you feeling this week, sir? Did you see that? Uh, I forgot okay. to do this. I usually do this. Did you week. see that you uh, video last night <laughs> on my home page no, but involving I the Starship Enterprise? And Star Wars, and the Death Star blew up. I hate the Star Enterprise. I hate Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. They had me like uh, they, I don't know how the hell they did it, but they were like floating in the air and everything. Really? The Starship Enterprise and then, yeah, it was very interesting. <coughs> I um. I, I like that page. Uh, on Facebook uh, about uh, you know, it's kind of like an everything you want wanted to know about Star Trek, all behind the scenes stuff and outtakes and huh. and things like that. Uh, they had one image of uh, Kirk. They were they were they were in the um, what do you call the the main room where where they where Ahura sits and Sulu and the Chekhov. bridge. The bridge. They were in the bridge, and uh, there was a scene where. Um, William Shatner and in the bridge in uniform was hovering over the actor that plays Chekhov and uh, Chekhov was hysterically laughing so I wrote down uh, it must be it must have been Shatner's hammy acting that cracked up Chekhov <laughs> he was like I'm sure they they, they did laugh a lot because I saw the uh, some of the videos and they you know even even Spock cracked up often. you know why because none of those guys took that series seriously in the beginning. No. Well, Shatner is uh, a funny, naturally funny guy. Remember. Like, I hear Arnold Schwarzenegger's fun to work with, too. Remember, that series never took off 
in prime time. They didn't think it was going to make it. Syndication is when it took off. Three years in prime time and it didn't do shit. Well, the honeymooners wasn't didn't uh, the honeymooners was knocked off the air by I Love Lucy. Yeah. They were in the same uh, time slot on different stations and. Uh, mm -hmm. And the uh, honeymooners didn't become legendary until the reruns mm -hmm. were played, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't know what, what kind of royalties they they divvied out back then. Probably nothing. There was nothing. No. Those days were gone. I, you know, I've sold Leave it several to Beaver books. Too. Outright sales, no royalties. You know. Well, days. I heard all the actors that were on those, all those. Um, situation comedies and TV shows from the uh, like the 50s mm. early 60s you leave it to beavers you you know all of them okay. all of them Dennis the men is it they they stopped collecting royalties a long time mm -hmm. ago and they they had, they had to get regular jobs <laughs> I think uh, Jerry Mathers uh, as, Jerry Mathers as, as the beaver. As the beaver is like a Los Angeles police officer or something. Uh, and, uh, a chip maybe? Tony Dow. California Highway Patrol. Wa a Wally, uh, Tony Dow. Played w yeah. yeah. You know they look Now there so was a typical, I'm sure he grew up to be a Republican. You know they look Because he had a, the hypocr hypocrisy down pat. Tony Dow? Yes! He was play he played up to the parents all the time, like he was an angel and everything and this that the other thing, and yet he was a devil behind the back. Wow, no, that was Eddie Haskell. I mean Eddie Haskell. That's w Wally the guy. was the Beaver's uh, uh, brother. Oh no, no. he was all Not right. Wally. He was Wally. cool. No, but the thing Wally, is, Wally okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's his name? Uh, yeah, Eddie Haskell was a. Uh, he was quite a character, uh -huh. to say the least. <laughs> He, he butt her up to uh, Beaver's yep. mom, yep. June yep. Cleaver, you know, and as soon as uh, the, oh, what a fine young man you have there in uh, in, uh, in in little the little Beaver. Mm -hmm. As soon as uh, the mother took off, beat it, you runt, get out of here. <laughs> no, but what I mean is they they did not pay, they did not collect the the, the money and the Residuals, royalties no. like actors do now. Just like Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. If they're, you know, they're lucky they made a hundred grand Babe a year. Babe Ruth at the top of his uh, game was making 240, 240,000. 240,000. Yep. And you didn't have, like today, with these uh, blood-sucking agents in baseball, you Come know. About A-Rod, baby. Well, look at the, what is it, Jason Kidd is 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 suddenly leaving the uh, the Brooklyn Nets to go with the, the Milwaukee Bucks, I think mm -hmm. they're called. And and you know his contract is not even nearly up, and uh, you know they just look for the highest bidder. All these modern day professional athletes. That's what it's about. Baby. They're, with, they're with the Yankees. They have a fantastic year. They don't care about the tradition and the honor of wearing the pinstripes. Or the team. Nah, the team and, and dedication to the team. Oh, I want to be with a winner because you know. Let's say the Yankees usually, not this year though, they suck. Uh, they usually end up in the playoffs. No, they'll go to a team that never ends up in the playoffs. Chicago. The Cubbies. The Cubs. Uh, Barrio, uh, which is, uh, Alfonso Soriano left the Yankees uh, after having a fantastic year. Went to the Chicago Cubs for several years. There's an example for the money. Uh, Robinson Cano leaves the Yankees. Tremendous player goes to uh, Seattle Mariners because they gave him a 10-year contract. Um, uh, Curtis Granderson leaves the Yankees after hitting so many home runs. Goes to the Mets because they offered him more money. Is he going to be in the playoffs? I highly doubt it. They look. They go to the highest bidder. No more honor, tradition, dedication, the love of the sport. It's all about money. And they, we're talking about the younger generation athletes. And they're cheaters with anabolic steroids. They they cheat. And they expect to be in the Hall of Fame after they cheat. Mm -hmm. Like a Barry Bonds and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Barry Bonds and uh, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire. You know, uh, and then they lie. They lie about it. <laughs> anyway.
let me get to They're this. They're bad boys, okay? It's just a, 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 a degraded uh, human nature, not human nature, uh, society is just degrading by the year, and it falls right into Tooth Timothy of how people will become in the end times. It's perfect. Without natural affection. Mm -hmm. Look it up for those that know how to look it up. Uh, uh, in the Bible. Okay. Nikola Tesla was right, and we are ready to prove it. So say the two Russian physicists who have just launched an Indiegago campaign to rebuild Nikola Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower in the fall of 2014. It will transmit clean, free electricity worldwide. And I want to salute the two physicists, Mr. Leonid, Leonid uh, Plekhanov and Sergei Plekhanov. Leonid and Sergei Plekhanov, capital P-L-E-K-H-A-N-O-V. The Plekhanovs, they're probably brothers, and I posted their smiling faces on our Facebook right, group. And uh, I shared it. Well, I, I also posted their their photo today. I shared it. Okay. Oh, oh, that I didn't see. Yeah, because they deserve uh, all the praise in the world, and, and I'm very happy and proud. Bravo, Russia. And For now. And bravo, the Plekhanov. Uh, For now. Brothers, what if they commercialize it? Well, that won't be a good thing. No, it won't, will it? No, it won't. As Tesla said, the Earth itself is a conductor. Yes. He showed the experiment with the Warden Cliff Tower and etc. Right. Where he put light bulbs right on the Earth, and they lit up. Be careful. Okay. The Warden Cliff Tower. Now that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to make the Earth a conductor, wherein anybody could then tap into it and have free electricity but instead of people like uh, Thomas Edison that sold out yeah. capitalism rears its ugly head well it sure has reared its ugly head today because they even patent life today they yeah they, they they're trying Jonas to get Salk said you couldn't patent the Sun Today they can. Well, uh, but the, some organization, and, uh, and I won't be shocked if, if it's the one I'm thinking of, is trying to get the FDA to approve uh, genetically modified humans, babies. Oh, they'll get it done. Believe me, and they know what? Those babies will grow up to be drones. Yeah, isn't that interesting? In the great wheel uh, of industry. Isn't that interesting? A couple can't get pregnant. They can't make their own. So uh, they can't find any decent baby in, in, a, in an orphanage, uh, foster care. So, <laughs> so Monsanto or some company like that offers them a genetically modified, cloned, or you know, just a. I don't know how they're going to do it. I guess they need something from the parents to do it you know a genetically modified kid it'll probably grow up to be like Damien on the omen it's insane <clears throat> science fiction often becomes science fact even the bad parts of, of science fiction because of human nature because of the, the wickedness of uh, and evil of human nature. Hey, climate change report. A lot of great white sharks are coming close to uh, off the D New York and Jersey coast just to say hi to everybody. Hello. In, in, within swimming distance on, of the beaches, they're, 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 they're friendly. They're, they, you know, they show them rubbing up against uh, fishing boats and people petting them on the, on the nose. Yikes. Actually, they're going after the chum. <laughs> Somebody put up a uh, video last night of a cat on a boat. 
uh, and a porpoise, and they were rubbing noses and all that sort of stuff. Porpoise. Really? Yeah. You mean a wild porpoise? Yeah. Now, do you see if when they're happy, they're still they still they're still friendly and they interact with humans, dolphins and porpoises. They, they don't have to be trained and, and kept in a in a watery prison. Mm -hmm. they, they when they're treated right, they will help man quite a bit. You know, they'll rescue people and everything. But mistreating. Oh no. We train them to carry bombs on their backs. Are these to destroy ships? Are these suicide cetera. bombing? That's the correct. Dolphin? So the dolphin loses its life. That's correct. For for the sake of uh, U.S. agreed. Yeah. Because U.S. military is what they do is for big corporations. When they when they go to war, they go to war for usually big oil. War is a racket. Major General Schmedley Butler. That's right. <laughs> said it accurately. Even Jesse Ventura thinks very highly of Schmedley Butler. Now, yesterday, the military was out there in full regalia, praising the Independence Day, saluting the flag. You mean all those mushy songs, the marches? That's the correct. John they Phillip, were all in bed. John Philip Sousa marches, Stars and Stripes Forever. But uh, did they know that they lost 45,000 soldiers in Iraq for nothing? But the oil companies are there. For nothing. Oh, did you know that uh, uh, little Dickie Cheney? Dick Cheney is against affordable health care for all well, Americans. Well, what would you expect? But his mechanical heart was paid for 100% by the taxpayers of the United States. Well, what would you expect but, from a hypocrite? But he likes he likes Obamacare. He, I mean, he likes that he likes getting somebody else paying for his heart. That's okay for Dick Cheney, but for other people like the poor having Obamacare, it's no good to him, to any Republican. They don't That's like that. Correct. That's as, correct. As long as they get the free health care. That's correct. Because they are elites. They are better than you. Because they say so, right? What are the they say so? They're in the power position. They're in the catbird seat, buddy. Well, the, the, the popes of the past misrepresented the Bible because they said so. You know, lay the Everybody law down. Everybody today misrepresents the Bible because they say so. And and what about as this, I said before, this, all of the translations today, the newer ones, are wrong. Yeah. Deliberately wrong. Well, you said you say, want, if you want to, you know, if you want to, according to the Bible, it's the devil has taken over to misconstrue all of that stuff. Well, Satan is alive and well in the churches, in the, church, in the body, in the body. Uh, what about those uh, those numbskull uh, uh, knuckleheads? Knuckleheads, uh, uh, imbeciles, uh, protesting, uh, stopping a bus of immigrants from entering Texas. Well, you know, the Congress is supposed to be working on that problem, but they're not. And then they're yelling at Obama for trying to do something with executive orders or whatever. Oh yeah, uh, John B Boehner Boner uh, wants an apology from Barack Obama for for for, for pulling They're suing in, him. For pulling an executive order? They're suing him. But GW Bush pulled many more executive orders in Obama. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, maybe Obama wants to get stuff done and he's sick and tired of of the Republican Congress not blocking everything, not complying with That's anything. Correct. That's correct. Repeal. Uh, 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 remember Boner's interview, John Boner's interview. Uh, don't uh, don't look at how m uh, how many uh, laws that we passed. Look at how many laws we appealed. Like uh, like that was an accomplishment. Well, it is to them because they they Re go repealed. there to do nothing. They, they go there to obstruct, to make the government smaller. So they get the. You know how they make it smaller? By cutting food stamps. Not the big Pentagon. And they want to cut Social Security like Social Security was, was an entitlement, which it's not. It's paid for. That's correct. 
you know. But Reagan made us pay more for it. That's what they do. The 175,000 a year, do. not counting perks, they only work. Uh, uh, I believe it's two days a week now. It's Something like that. Two days a week on I average? I think so. Even that's a lot. <laughs> well, they don't work. They don't really work. Jeez, no. man. You gotta look at it that way. They're not working. You know, well, when, somebody, yeah. somebody ought to do a documentary about what exactly do they do every day that they are there. All I know is when their session is over, they run really fast out of the Capitol building. Yeah, to get those trains. <laughs> but the point is, what do they do? What do they do? Go to the cafeteria and, and spend, spend all morning with coffee uh, or, and, or et cetera, et cetera. And they, what and do they, they chew, do? They chew the fat and they laugh. They laugh about, you know, how they're going to stick it to 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 America. 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 Or America how they're going to stick it to America and Obama. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they probably do. Joke, joke about the whole thing. But somebody ought to do that because uh, I'd find that very interesting. What the hell do they actually do? Just think of the center of a bagel. <laughs> when, if all you do is re donuts. if all you do is repeal, that doesn't equate to what did they repeal? Work. work Real work means you gain something at the end of your eff efforts. You have the fruits of your labor. Okay. What did they repeal? They didn't repeal anything. Well, they block. It block is not repeal. Obstacle is not repeal. Repeal is to stop that law. Period. All right, so it they, doesn't exist so anymore. So they throw up roadblocks. That's correct. They didn't repeal anything. Now, more misinformation from Boner. Listen, forget about everything you've learned out there, uh, listeners and viewers, in, in terms of trickle-down economics. I don't care if Ronald Reagan used to talk about it. it. doesn't exist, never was meant to work. What you have is siphon up to the top 1 or 10 percent. Uh, give it 20. Oh, there's give it 20. Oh, the fat cats are now the, 20? The first 5 percent are really getting it, but give it 20. They're doing well. But they're, they're reaping from siphon up economics? They're, for them there has been a recovery, let's say. Okay, the top 20 percent siphon up to the top 20 percent economics. This is a siphon, by the way. Siphon up. There is no trickle-down economics. Never was. All right. My, my trusty siphon. Okay. Are you ready to sink your teeth into these readings? Yeah, let me officially, uh, <coughs> what's that goofy, goofy song, lyrics of that song, Let Freedom Ring? Well, let, let the truth ring. Yeah, freedom, my ass. Let the truth ring. Again. Male fish <laughs> carrying eggs. What? Intersex fish. Oh my gosh. Have been found in Pennsylvania's Susquehanna, Delaware, and Ohio River Basin. Susquehanna Hat Company. Slowly I turn, step by step, inch by inch. That was Abbott and Costello a series episode. A sign that the water may be tainted with chemicals. You mean they're mutant fish? According to the United States Geological Survey. The research found that two fish species, smallmouth bass and white sucker, yeah, indigenous to the Northeast. We're exhibiting the effects of exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals. Endocrine glands? Intersex characteristics caused by hormones and hormone mimicking compounds include immature eggs in male fish. The most common hormone found in water and soil samples was estrone. 
a potent endocrine disrupting chemical often found in sewage from water wastewater plants and the manure of animals such as cows chickens and pigs the researchers said I bet you the big corporation said, We didn't do nothing. We're innocent. Well, isn't that what uh, scumbag liars usually do? Even yeah. when, their, when their hand is caught in the cookie jar? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do. They deny what they did. They hire a PR company. And the PR company gives them back in the good graces of the American people. Okay. Well, well yeah, you know when they when they catch a celebrity uh, uh, that has mm -hmm. a, uh, a designer a line of designer clothing uh, with the celebrity's name on it, and they find out that child labor were, were manufacturing the clothes. You know they they have the uh, they try to cover up, and the celebrity says. Uh, I had no idea this was happening and, oh, and dear. shed some crocodile tears uh -huh. and then uh -huh. the PR goes to work, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada. A South Arkansas woman celebrated her 116th birthday. Oh, oh, this deserves a salute with the lucky Blackthorn Shillelagh. What's her name? Gertrude Weaver. I salute and say happy birthday to Gertrude Weaver, 116. She turned 116 when? Friday. How about that? My, my mother's birthday was 4th of July too. My mother's birthday was yesterday. How about that? She was born on the 4th of July. Well, happy birthday to the both of them. Gertrude Weaver, 116. And, and me mother, I think she turned 82. We, we brought lobster tails and paella, <laughs> paella home. We all, we all, you know, from uh, Segovia. They have a new restaurant in, um, uh, well, the, the original one is in Moonachie, Moonaki, New Jersey. This one's Little Ferry. Yeah, we had lobster and fish and shrimp and clams and all that good stuff. Yeah, happy birthday to the, to the both of them. Gertrude Weaver, 116 years old, bless her heart. The oldest man in the world. What? Was 120 years. No one has lived beyond that. Well, um, uh, gerontologist, uh, scientist, uh, Dr. Roy Walford, the one that wrote that book, Maximum Lifespan, mm -hmm. said that the, uh, the human being is uh, under ideal conditions should live to at least 150. Well, under ideal conditions. Ideal you conditions, which, yes. Which means very low stress. Which means a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, you, you know that that the Indians in Ecuador that are centenarians, that uh, they're average, they're they li most of them live over 100. Hey, when you when you get up in the morning and smell pure air all the days of your life and eat whole food, untainted whole foods, uh, natural foods, and get all those phytonutrients and, and, uh, and enzymes and, uh, you know, uh, and pure, breathing pure air and drinking pure Yet water. And, something. And not having to rush anywhere. Yet not something. Pay the bills and, and, you know. Yet something does not allow us to go beyond 120. Telomeres. Telomeres, the, the fact that uh, the cells do not continue to replicate after a certain point. Is that why, cer is that why, is that why certain creatures like, uh, let's take the laboratory rat, the white laboratory rat, even if you feed them the, the best quality food available, and let them exercise in the wheel every day and, 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 and let them go play and run around. They still die after a few years, right? 
you add a few months to their lifespan. But what that's it. it. Lifespan is what, two years? The average Something rat, like that? rat, well there are rats, there is a species of domesticated rat that lives over 10, but, but, but the average typical cheapo, you know, lab rat lives two or three years, I believe. Yeah, well, Something Gary like Nolan, his experiments, he added a you know, few months to their uh, lifespan. But a few months? Yeah. Okay. But All not right. Ten years. And that was under ideal. Of course, Gary Null took care of him. That was right. under ideal conditions. I mean, his rats were not in cages. They were running around. Free range rats. Free range rats. <laughs> but they ate pretty good. Yes, they did. Under Gary Null, and and the most he added was several months yeah. to their life. Mm. That's telomeres. Uh, you know, uh, the biological clock, right? Well, uh, they say, as in the fruit fly, that our heart has only so many beats to it. Now, I have a question. If that is true, why do we exercise strenuously adding more beats? No, no, when uh, the stroke, when, when somebody is physically fit, they have, um, their heart rate goes down, and they they improve their not stroke. Not during their exercise. Their stroke volume, like in other words, not doing their exercising. Ba boom! Instead of ba boom ba boom ba boom ba boom, it's ba boom, ba boom. So the force of the beat in somebody who's physically fit. I know, but not during the exercise. No, your you heart. You are rate. raising your heart rate during your exercise. Therefore, you are adding more beats. Listen. And taking away a little longevity. A physically fit, a senior citizen that is physically fit has more energy, feels much better, and uh, uh, has better uh, uh, blood test results. Balance. Because it does raise your good cholesterol. Balance. Balance. Because that's one of the things that goes as you grow older. Circulation. Ataxia and... and uh, weak legs yeah you know well but uh, circulation is very important to the elderly and 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 they they must keep active keeping active is uh, pretty important I mean uh, look at Jack LaLanne you know Jack LaLanne Jack LaLanne looked terrible in his later years he he died from an infection <gasps> now he, I mean, he didn't die from natural causes. He did not just expire. He um, he died uh, from an infection, uh, which kind of puzzles me because the man uh -huh. took took a lot of supplements. Mm -hmm. But he he must have been doing something. He must have been not doing something in Correct. terms of his supplementation. Yeah. Maybe he should have followed, but I don't know if he did or not. Linus Pauling's protocol for vitamin C. Because if he did that, there would have been no infection. We don't know. But we don't know the facts. Anyway, Continue. on Friday she celebrated with cake, a party, and a new title. She's now officially the oldest confirmed living American and second oldest person in the world. You mean that's that's currently breathing? I don't know that. Not, well, oh. yeah, well, yeah, not of all time. The research group said Gertrude Weaver spent her birthday at home at Silver Oaks Health and Rehabilitation in Camden, New Jersey, Little Rock. Excuse me. Oh God! Don't say Arkansas. Camden, New Jersey. Camden. Yeah, right. I don't think you'll have a long lifespan in Camden. <laughs> no, you get shot coming out of your door. Yeah, just to come out and get your mail, yeah. you get shot. About 100 miles southwest of Little Rock. This year's festivities included the new award from the Gerontology Research Group, which analyzed U.S. Census records to determine that Gertrude Weaver is the oldest living American rather than the 115 year old Geraldine Talley who was born in 1899. 
boy, she's seen a lot, hasn't she? The research, yeah. the research group, which consults with the Guinness Book of World Records, found that the 1900 census listed Weaver as two years old, putting her birthday in 1898. The research group's database administrator and senior consultant for Guinness, Robert Young, said. Wow. Well, that's something to be said about that. That's, an, that's a tremendous accomplishment. Uh, um, oh, the man, the, the man that's, wait, the person that's older than Gertrude Weaver, is it a man? I don't know if he's still living, but it was. I said the 120 year old. It was a man. He's the longest on record. I don't know if he's still living. That's incredible because usually yeah. women live longer than men. He probably died because, you know, 120 is the record. Yeah, and men usually don't last very long. I mean, uh, they can if they if they really took care of themselves, but man. What you got there, Chief? New Jersey Governor Christie is a lawyer. Yeah, he was a federal prosecutor. He was. But he disregards the law. It's a scoff law. He championed the pension reform law. Then he did not abide by it. His actions are shameful, he has immoral, yes. and unethical. Oh yeah. Well, he has. He's a Republican. He has his, and he doesn't care what anyone else has. It's like credit card companies lending money to clients, and then the state refuses to pay the money owed. Uh, you know, Bank of America told me if I wanted copies of past checks, I have to pay a fee of three dollars per yes, copy. Yes, they have. And that's just the tip of the iceberg on huh? what these robber barons They do. have made that all for their own benefit. I cried, I cried out when they stopped sending you your checks back every month. I said, oh boy. What is coming now? More work they don't have to do, you, and more problems you, for you. You have to request things in the mail, and if you do request it, they they deduct the service charge. I believe you can monthly go for online your... and copy it, but I don't know if it costs you. Uh, you, know? you see the price of an inkjet cartridge for the? It costs more than the printer. How many people can afford to keep on buying those cartridges so they can make copies? You know, uh, I don't know. It's um, they uh, they got fees on top of fees That's on top correct. of fees. It's free money. Fees. Free money. Created fees. What is the point of paying pension from a paycheck when one may not even put it in the future? This governor, as well as past ones, has improperly used state pension funds as a personal piggy bank. This is not fiscal conservatism, it is a shell game. It's a shell, it's a cheating shell game, whereas uh, Christie wins all the time. Well, he just did not pay $887 million to the state pension fund so that he could plug a hole, $1.5 billion, I believe, in the state budget. Now, other governors have also robbed it from the pension fund. So, when they take money to solve problems, they take money from the little guy. Yes, they, they, they never they never think of 
Oh, gee. Taxing the corporation well, and the big boys. Yeah, let's Europe. tax the rich. They're yeah. not paying taxes anyway. Yeah. Let's tax the rich. I believe the figure Dr. Richard Wolf said today uh -huh. was somewhere, oh my gosh, don't quote me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's way up there. The corporations with their subsidiaries in the Cayman Islands and Bermuda and Ireland and etc. Their offshore tax havens cost us somewheres upward near two hundred billion dollars a year. Plus all that money that is over there instead of in the United States. Yeah. Highway robbery. But they get away with it. Listen. Everything, all the shenanigans that are going on today are going on because politicians are taking the bribes. That's correct. And they elected uh, corporations and whatever. Write the laws. I, Alec. Because the, the, the congressmen and senators uh, are taking the bribes. Oh, by the way, the Senate did something... They said no to Barack Obama about something pretty important. I don't know if you have a reading today about that, but I doubt when it. it comes to me, I'll, I'll mention it. Uh, Fine. The governor has repeatedly crushed the middle class and poor in favor of lifting up the wealthy. Oh, I think it has to do with taxing big oil. I think it has to do with taxing big oil. Taxing, yeah, taxing, uh, taxing the rich. Basically, the the Senate, which is supposed to be a predominant, I mean, it's supposed to be Democrat controlled. The Senate, U.S. Senate, said no to taxing big oil. So what does that say about your two-party system now, you, you Democrat lovers out there? My father. A retired firefighter at 80 years, 88 years old, barely makes ends meet on his small pension. He has not had an increase in three years. You know what the average wage was back in, uh, let's say, 1900 mm -hmm. for the workers to live on? Four hundred and thirty-seven dollars a year. <laughs> Recently, I read a statement yeah. by State, State Senator Jennifer Beck, Republican of Monmouth County. Yeah, I have a feeling I'm going to hate what she says. Asking how New Jersey could break its word regarding funding for the Business Employment Incentive Program. And I almost choked on my bagel. I absolutely agree that the state should keep its word. But has she been living in a bubble? We both live in a state where politicians can strike a deal with state employees that requires the workers to pay more into their pension fund in order to simply get the state to pay what it owes. And then some of those same politicians, for example, Governor Christie and his minions, can claim they have no choice but to renege on the deal. We just gave them a choice, didn't we? Yep. Tax the corporations and the wealthy. That's the choice. Sure. After reading the column by Assemblyman Gary Shar of Democrat of Passaic County, I once again have to wonder why Governor Christie is not facing impeachment hearings. 
While first campaigning for office, Christie wrote a letter to the teachers' union swearing he would not touch teacher benefits or pensions. Oh, really? That was clearly wrong because that letter, which was on his website, disappeared the day after he won. We all know what he did more recently with teacher pensions. To the point that a reader wrote last week that the governor should be arrested. He is not, however, only hurting teachers. Under his lack of leadership, New Jersey is 47th in job creation. All those tax breaks for the corporations and the where's the jobs? Yeah, the job creators. Oh, oh the job numbers went down this m month to 6.1 percent. But you know why? Why? Not because people were getting jobs, but because they stopped looking and are no longer counting. They're not counted because they gave up. But people that. Um, uh, their federal extensions to unemployment ran out and they just gave up. They got disgusted. No, gee whiz. Frustrated, yeah. That's something the uh, the House and the Senate could work on, huh? Extending those benefits? Well, they should, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, state um, Senate, Trenton, New Jersey, they have enough evidence to go after Christie now collectively. Well, they're waiting for the Attorney General to get done with his investigation. Oh, is, wait, is this the guy that went after Scott Walker? What the hell does Scott Walker have to do with New Jersey? There is a federal, I don't know, a lot of a prosecutor or an investigator, somebody from Washington yeah, he, just caught Scott Walker doing something yeah, big. With the campaign. The political big. Yeah. And he said when he's done with Walker, he's coming after Christie. Nah, he can't come after Christie. Why? He's from the, he's from Washington. He can he can come after whoever Obama sends him after. But there's already a guy after Christie. From the feds. From the feds. Okay. Oh well, that's good. As long as there's somebody after Christie. Yes. That's all I care Just about. Just because it's on the back burner doesn't mean it's the it's, it's gone. finished. Yeah, it's it's gone. finished. Yeah. Okay. Gary Shaw wrote since Christie took office, New Jersey has had its credit rating downsized six times costing taxpayers even more. He refuses to increase taxes on millionaires. Of course. All the while ignoring the problems facing the poor mm -hmm. and middle class. In addition, Christie is out of state quite often campaigning for others. No, oh, he's trying to help. He's sucking up to the Republican Party for, for his 2016 uh, uh, run. I wonder if the Republican Party should pay his salary instead of state taxpayers. Well, he's certainly not earning his salary in New Jersey, so that might be a good idea. Yep, 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 yep. So how are we doing on time before your lunch? Five more minutes. And then it's lunchtime. Lunch so, so we'll cut. We'll cut off right now. I got a couple of smallies. All right, knock off a smallie. Regarding U.S. Supreme Court can't make employers cover contraception. Accompanying the article is a photo of a demonstrator in front of the Supreme Court holding up a sign that reads, Birth control, not my boss's business. I agree. But it, I agree. But is, is, the, is the contraceptive coverage automatically uh, part of the policy uh, de determined by the insurance company yeah so they're not they're not asking the employer do you want to cover a contraception no. so why is the employer uh, getting they, involved they have a religious uh, problem but their religion is unproven no well, re no religion should spend any true. any taxpayers money and no religion should interfere with politics but religions do spend taxpayer money because they're tax exempt. But it's what a what a female employee does when she clocks out and she's on her own time and she's off company property is no 
nobody's damn what about business. it's nobody's damn business while she's on the clock if she's on a break why a break? What's what's the problem with when she's working? It's her pussy. It doesn't disappear. It's her body. It's her personal life. It's none of the, the boss's That's damn business. Correct. Just like it's none of the boss's damn business what you post on Facebook. That's because correct. you're you're not on company time. Doesn't matter company you're, time. You're on your, trying to tell you. You're on your own time. Your well, freedom doesn't disappear because you're on for company time. That's true. That's true. That's well, true. well, I mean, if you're like, uh, if you're like. Uh, if you're on break, on your lunch break, and you want to go on Facebook, or you want to check your email, that's really none of your employer's damn business. Well, that's something different. No, I mean, people have gotten fired because they they posted maybe the truth about their boss on Facebook. It's been going on for a hundred uh, decades in this country. Oh, oh, uh, uh, I'm the boss. I control you. And, and you said something not so nice about me, so yes, I'm going yes. to fire you. That's right. It's it's a power game. It's an ego trip. That's correct, and it's been going on since at least the Industrial Revolution. But getting back to contraception, the contraceptive gynecolo is part of the gynecological coverage. Am I right? And it is part of the policy that the insurance company offers. That the employer pays. For. That the employer pays for. It's not right. going to knock any money off the policy by omitting the gynecological coverage. So mind your own damn business Republicans and mind your own damn business employers. And cults, religious cults, should mind cults. their own damn business. Cults, get it? Cults, cults, which is not part of the Bible. Even if it was part of the Bible, guess what? You haven't proven, you can't prove that your God exists. So mind your own damn business. To keep your Pinocchio nose out of people's lives. I agree. It's not the boss's business. But then it should follow that if employee's birth control is not the boss's business, the boss should not be responsible for being the source through which the employees acquire birth control. Wrong! They are offering the medical insurance, health insurance, as a fringe benefit. Okay? So it is none of their business if the person happens to use the contraceptive part. Okay? That goes without saying. So it's not, if it ain't the boss's business, then it ain't the boss's business to pay for it. Wrong! The boss pays for it because he ain't paying you a higher salary. He's giving you a fringe benefit. Yeah, because your salary is way behind the cost of living. Still way behind the cost of living. Listen, a woman's body and a woman's contraceptive uh, uh, decisions are, are not only her boss's, not her boss's damn business, it, it's not even her family's damn business. Yeah. It's her body, it's her personal decision uh, of, of what contraception she wants to use and what she doesn't want to use and and whether or not she uh, uh, she wants to terminate a fertilized egg or, or a uh, what is it embryo that breathes like a fish life like I told some some numbskull uh, today again life begins with the first breath as in Adam set, uh, says the Bible it begins with the first breath. It is not a fertilized egg. A human being, human life does not begin with As a fertilized the, egg. While the embryo, the fetus, the child, whatever you want to do, is in the mother's uterus, it is a parasite. It lives off the other person. Yes, that is true. When it comes out, and it takes its first breath. It is now an individual. Your Bible head. says nothing about abortion. Nothing. That's true. Okay? That's true. And you heard it from the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Now it is time 
4 through Rapper Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And I will meet right now. Well, after. You're going to run over to the other, uh, 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 you know. Uh, where, the, where the video monitor the video is. Room, and yes. I will join with uh, live. I will join with um, our very own longtime uh, voice artist. William H. Morrill III for our show, followed by promo commercial done by William H. Morrill III also. And then we will return for the balance of this show, uh, our post-Independence Day uh, show. And the next holiday, I believe, is Labor Day, right? Labor Day, yes. That's in September. Like that song, see you in September. But anyway, there's no real, there's no major holidays. There's no holidays at all between now and uh, and the en end of summer. How about that? Well, my birthday is August the first, but it's a birthday. I, I don't, I don't count them anymore. When you reach, when you become an adult, the more adult you become, if you happen to mature. Uh, then you ce you celebrate and count birthdays less. Uh, what's that banner I read? Um, it said if you're if you're if you're not if you don't grow up by age 50, just forget about it. You're not a, you're not obligated to grow up. If you're not matured by well, age you're 50. You're matured by 50 for crying out loud. You become a babbling idiot. <laughs> right? You mean like Sarah Palin? Like Sarah Palin and well, Michelle. She's, she's a babbling idiot in her young age. And uh, M Michelle Bachman Turner Overdrive. Uh, Bachman? <laughs> yeah. 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 Boop, boop, boop. Babbling idiots. All I hear is this when they talk. You know, I notice. I notice that uh, today, uh, William H. Moore the Third. Uh, you, you you can't rely on too many people nowadays. It's it's like there, there's there's uh, deception all around us in every walk of life. There's dishonest people. There's there's, there's complete well, complete Jimmy, crooks. There's liars. You, look, look what I was building. Super tech. How I got screwed by business partners. One of the world's biggest corporations, and my partners just disappeared. And yeah, stuff. I mean, so there's no. A great it's, example. it's it's like a, the, the the overall quality quality of life shows that there is very few people that you meet in throughout life that you well, can bottom, actually rely on. The bottom, line, the bottom line, it's a simple question, and I don't think anybody knows the answer. I don't. I don't think you do, or nobody. Who can you really trust? Well, and, don't, and don't see your parents. That's a good question. And don't see your parents. Because you watch TV and the news the whole bit. Parents you, screw over their you've kids. You've got parents murdering their children, screwing their children, messing with their children. You've got, you've got parents where even the rest of the family doesn't know that they're pedophiles or child pornography. Well, look at, uh, so who can you, look who, at can, who can you really, truly trust? Look at the child stars who were ripped off by their parents. Then the Jackie Coogan law came. So who up. can you truly trust? It's it's very, but I know I know who is the least trustworthy of let's say business people, car dealers, mechanics, uh, maybe furniture store salesmen. Uh, they do bait and switch all the time, uh, like mechanics. If you if you honestly meet and if you find an honest mechanic, a hundred percent honest mechanic. Hang on to that person and give him dear, business with word of mouth. With dear life. Tell because, people this is the guy you've got to go to. Because today a business person doesn't appreciate your patronage to his business. You they being want, a customer. They want the quick buck. Short term, short term profit. Not long term, they want you coming back. And if they goof, they put it on you. They blame you. It's always your fault. I had this experience with a mechanic. It's always my fault for work they did not do. Yeah, because I, I'm the one. I had. Wait a minute. Meeting you, 
you had your car here. And it was your fault because you didn't top off the antifreeze, the oil, the whole bit. Well, that cost is not what you paid this guy for. Well, why is it your fault? Well, if you pay somebody to uh, to uh, repair a, a leaky engine, a leaky gasket, oil gasket, last if year. It's leaky, meaning there's not enough oil in there. It leaked. You've got to top the oil off. Right. Now, any, any decent mechanic would know with his brain, I've got to put more oil yeah. in here. Now, now so, if you... Let's be fair. Now, if you... Um, if you fix the leak, naturally, if, if it was leaking oil, you have to top it off with oil. But you're right. He's wrong. And also, most mechanics, common procedure, you, before you return the car to your client, you check all fluids. That's the first thing. Transmission, antifreeze. You check, I think it's four or five basic fluids. You just check them all and make sure. Your guy. Oh. I don't know. Well, it's common sense. It's common sense that you always check the fluid. It's just like a, um, a computer... The, the lifeblood of your car. Right. A computer technician, the first thing he does is check to see if it's plugged in. He checks the connection. You've been back how many times over the past week or two for little fluid checks? Things are right. going wrong. Exactly. Why? That's a good question. Why? Why? Well, it's really difficult today to find honest business partners, honest professionals, and honest, uh, I would say, uh, people involved in service, what did I just customer say to you service. About two or three minutes ago, who do you trust and who can you trust? Uh, I, I, today, Things I don't like know. this, you get people get so disenchanted. It's like, I don't trust anybody anymore. You don't know who to trust. You can't anymore. even. You can't even trust it, an infomercial product. Well, sadly, the bad ones don't live up to what they say. Make the good ones that do live up to say to what they say look bad, because you know everyone thinks they're all bad. Well, they so, pe pe that's and the, the good same. Ones, the yeah. good ones are great. The same thing with uh, like lawyers, politicians, yeah. things like that. You know, they, they certain they, certain bad ones make the whole lot look bad, and that's just not true. It's yeah. sad. You well, have these bad apples that make the rest yeah. of the bunch look bad. You end up uh, you end up stereotyping <coughs> a whole entire group they're, they're of people. All bad. Well, no, they're not all bad. But sadly, how do you know? You're right. Yeah. How do you know? Yeah. Well, it's got to be word of mouth. And how many friends does one have that is not an acquaintance, but a real friend who is going to stick by you even when you're down and out and hit rock bottom? Mm -hmm. I've got a number of friends that anything I thought I would agree with them, they pout. Like babies, yeah. Why do you pout? Because well, I don't agree with you? Remember I, I told you about that friend of mine, a yeah. female? You think I oh, will ever get married? And I was honest with her. And she got mad at me for giving me her another answer. I said, no, I don't. I don't think anybody could tolerate your attitude. I'm sorry. And she got mad at me. For telling her the truth. You asked me a question. I gave you an honest answer. Right. Why are you getting mad at me? In the first place, why did you ask me the question if you weren't prepared to accept my answer? I'll get on the bad guy for answering your question. You know? I, I'm like, I can't win. The you catch-22, you can't yeah. win. Well, it's like when people come up to me and say, can I ask you a question? I go, well, you just did. <laughs> you know, so. well, you know, people are also very petty, too. Adult, uh, adult human beings, they spend their whole life debating and 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 and, uh, well, look, and, and gossiping about nonsense. nonsense about all the serious BS, and things. And they get mad at you if you don't agree with their political view, their religious views, the whole bit. You have the right to your own beliefs and thoughts and political whatever you want to call it and everything else. Well, this don't get mad at somebody because they don't agree with you. Stop the pettiness, this, okay? This, wor stop this world, this country is in very, very serious turmoil. And people should not waste their time on anything petty whatsoever. When I say petty, I mean reality shows, celebrities, entertainers, all that. All well, I don't above. like when you call an entertainer, an actor, a singer, whatever, a hero. That shit's got to stop. The true heroes right. are, are, are our doctors, our scientists, our soldiers, our Engineers. military. The people that really help make it. An actor, 
whatever. Granted, what they do is wonderful, but you're not a hero. But they always ask them for political yeah, advice, people, the media. I, well, because of their, their status in the limelight, a lot of them can make an impact because, sadly, the public does listen to what they say. So if they do say the good things and the right things to have certain benefits, right. that's very good. Like these, oh, that's Milano and others doing these commercials for animal rights and whatever, and the whole bit. Mm -hmm. That can make an impact. So it's how you use yeah. your celebrity status sometimes. Right, Linda Blair, Melissa Milano. Yes, you yeah. do certain things. You can make a big influence, but some people use it for the wrong thing as well, too. Well, I'll give you an example. Kevin Costner, he paid out of his own pocket. Uh, he, he had an invention that would clean up the oil spill that the, the, the British ago, Petroleum. Yeah. yeah, what's happening? And the government would not get behind him. He had to do it out of his own pocket. What's going on with it? It's just... Oh, well, oh, oh, by the way, BP wants restitution for, I guess, money spent during the cleanup. You believe the audacity of... You want money back for what you spent during yeah. the cleanup of the spill that, that, uh, that you caused with your drilling? Yeah, they want some kind of restitution after the damage that they did that is still going on. Because supposedly the, the floor of the Gulf of Mexico is still toxic down there. But wasn't that kind of like a murderer saying, going to the family, saying, I want money back because I yeah. killed your son? Well, you know what it is? They're on a roll because they know that so many corporations get away with murder today. Yeah. And, and they're on a, they want to see how far they can they're get. They're on the name companies, but look at the automotive recalls and bailouts and this and that. You get tired of it after a while. I told you about the, the Tesla, the nerve of them charging $70,000 base price. I mean, come on. Look, I blame the fool that pays the 70000 I don't blame Tesla per well, se. You, well, bottom line, Jimmy, let's be honest. You know my feeling of, I like a real car. I don't like an yeah, electric I engine. I want a real rumbling sound like a Mustang or Corvette, you know, for our You like the internal combustion engine. I want engine. a real car. Yeah. I don't want to have to pull it and plug it in. And, and the bottom line, what's the best you're getting mileage-wise on an electric car? 140, 120 miles? It's not very far. But I, hear the, I hear the range is pretty, very long on a Tesla. But. It's not that much. It's not that far. It's a lithium battery, I think. Yeah. Oh, uh, remember you, you, we were talking about Matt Lauer and, he, and the so-called hot water he got into? All he did was ask a female CEO. I just, I just don't get this. He, she's a CEO of, you remember what company? Yeah, GM. General, General Motors? Okay, female. And she happens to be a mother of young children. So what he, did he say that was wrong? He, he asked her an uh, honest question. How do you swing it between being a mother? She between was honest. She was, she was gorgeous. She didn't seem bothered by it. She said what her own children said. Mom, remember, you're a mother first. Right. What did he do that was wrong? And he got heat for it. And then if you don't, the public rips him apart for saying he was too salt on the interview. He didn't ask the hard, inquiring questions. Right. Now, so how could Matt Lauer have won? I don't There's think. No way. I didn't think that was a that was a hard, tough question what at did all. Did he say it was wrong? Nothing. He, he asked her, "How do you juggle both? What, what's being, wrong? A, being a mother or, or being, He's being a, great a, a CEO? He's a very wonderful, likable man. Right. I do not understand this. I just think people are so damn thin-skinned today. You open your mouth, you're ripped apart. You go. You walk on eggshells. I'll tell you what happened to me. There's this uh, a member. She lives locally. Uh, she got married. Uh, a member of uh, on my Facebook groups, friends list. Uh, she lives not too far. A Latin American woman, and she got married. She has some kids, and uh, she had her first child by her new husband. And the girl is adorable. She looks like 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 an angel. She's got curly hair, chubby cheeks, pouty lips, beautiful eyes. Hello. She's she's probably I don't even think she's one. She's she's in it. Oh, she's a newborn. She's a, well, not newborn. She's be, I guess between a newborn and one years old. She's a newborn. Yeah, she's yeah. a newborn. But she's got a face that I tell her all the time she could do child commercials. She's so adorable looking. So what happened was and she's got tan skin. So what happened was I said. I said one of her pictures was really, she's extremely uh, adorable and cute. I said she could do uh, baby food commercials for Goya, Goya baby food. So the father got offended. The father says, that's a racist statement. 
The, mo the mother thought it was cute and funny. What's but racist about that? Because what's it's racist a Latino about? company? He's, yeah, he says, he says, why can't my daughter do commercials for saltines? I says, go right ahead. Yeah. You can do that too. I said, would you turn down the job if 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 uh, Goya offered it One to of you? My friends I have would you turn with it down? Every morning as an executive with Goya. It's a great company. Yeah. So what? I don't understand this. Because he felt maybe I was I was stereotyping his his little girl. Oh, this is got. People stop. are so thin-skinned today. This has got to stop. What, so sensitive about it. right away racism, racism, the racism. Names of a team, sports team. This you open your mouth anymore? It's just uh, the public has to get together and just say screw it, say it. If look, you don't like it too bad. Look, if he asks you know, me, if, really, if, let's start saying and speaking freely. If okay? he if he asks me, if I grew up watching Leave It to Beaver or you know mention some shows that are predominantly white, I wouldn't get offended by that. Care less. God, if have, the guy came up and said, "You're nothing yeah. but a stupid white man," I'd say, "Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm not offended." Yeah. I, I'm strong enough where yeah. it doesn't bother me. They're always I have never, yeah. Jimmy, you know I've told you this in the decades we've known each other. I have never been offended. I don't know what offended even means. Nobody can define it. We say, what does offended really mean and feel like? But why what do you mean? But you notice how everybody plays the race card today? Everything's a race. Everything is race. It's black. It's Latino. It's Jewish. It's, it's, it's what it is. It's nauseating. It's sickening. I'm tired of it. Yeah, Let's go back I to mean, being human beings. Yeah. Speak I mean, heaven, to hope, speak your peace of mind. Heaven forbid they should have a European pride parade in and Fifth Avenue in New York City. Heaven forbid that should happen. Well, they would call them. You've got gay pride. You've got uh, Black History Month. You've got other things too. But if the white man does it, we're the bad guys. Yeah, they, they would call them white supremacists I, for having a European yeah, pride parade. Yeah. European American. So, hey, did you hear? Did you hear the crazy, insane decision that the U.S. Supreme Court made, giving employers the right to use religious reasons to deny? No, I don't think it was that's to, true. To deny women no. of birth control? No, I don't think that's true. I think it's only, only for that one company, Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. It's not across but, the board for all but, companies. But isn't isn't birth control part of the uh, insurance company's policy? And I don't think the employer really has anything to do with the policy. I don't know how this works. I don't know. That's one thing I'm not sure about. I mean, either the insurance company includes uh, uh, Planned Parenthood or whatever you want to Why call it. Why come out now? Because Supreme Court uh, said that um, an employer but can you use control for decades. Can Why use, is it coming out now? They say they can use religious, personal religious reasons not to su su supply contraception coverage for their female employees. So what do you do with the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses that don't believe in blood transfusions? Uh, what do you do if you have a surgery? Christian Almost scientists. All surgeries require blood blood transfusions. What about the Christian scientists? Yeah, I mean, when do, you know, and, and personally, I believe in forcing them because you're, you're whoever is going to die. And a blood transfusion is essential during surgery. Well, you know, it's, you it, have loss of blood. I, you know, I don't understand this. You know what's going to happen if uh, contraception is not available? You, you're going to have more abortions, more back uh, illegal abortions. And then if you have more of that, you have more clinics prop up and then more bombings from the, from the fanatics. From the nuts, yeah. yeah. So what's going to do is they, everything comes back around and everything, you know. Listen, you know. They so said, what's the answer? They said, is there one? Listen, they said it probably since the the beginning of, of the birth of this country. They do not mix church and state. Oh, why not? Maybe that's our problem. Maybe we should just mix things and talk about it. Stop, stop the saying, don't ever talk about it. Don't ever do that. No, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, religion is an unproven theory. But what did I tell you? What, Nobody's what, ever proved that God exists. say they have faith. What have we said on one of the shows? I told you. Faith is like hope. Faith is not fact. Faith is hope. It's perceived. It is not fact. Yeah, it's perceived. So, you know. Like, because somebody perceives something to be true, does that mean it's true? If, no. they're, if, they're, if they're so strong in their belief, why can't they prove it? Nobody's, nobody's been why able to prove you, it. Why not? Why well, don't one See, of you, one of you, Step up to the plate and prove it. They don't like. Uh, the well, they hate when they challenge that. They don't like, like those questions. Miss uh, Tyson uh, DeGrasse, what are the uh, physicist mm -hmm. of Cosmos? They ha they hate him. The religious the nuts. questions. You remember what I said on your show months ago? But he backs up what he says. Yeah, see? I know. But what did I say on your, your your show months ago? Did God create man 
or did man create God? Is there really a God? Prove it to me. Show me. I'd like to know if anyone out there can prove me. Oh God! So it's only faith-based. It's 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 theory. Faith is hope. Faith is hope. Faith right? is not remember. Faith is not fact. Now sci science can be either proved. They can be either proven fact or theory. Just like mathematics too. It's an exact science. If you can prove it, yeah. Math sure. is proof. It's, it's yeah. exact. I mean, you know, doing do is for blah blah blah. Yeah, exactly. You and, know, and, and other uh, sciences too. You know, a lot of science is proven by mathematics too. So the concept of forcing things on someone like a fascist because that's your faith. or violence my belief. based on somebody's belief yeah. is insane. It's absolutely it just insane. doesn't make any sense. And no. they carry it over more. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, uh, and sadly, it's cost a lot of lives. Yeah. Throughout the history of yeah. mankind. Well, I want to say before we say goodbye uh, for today, uh, uh, for today, I want to say something positive. I, I was very pleasantly surprised when I walked into Kmart to see that the synthetic oil was only four dollars and change a quart, and it made me happy. And I'm glad that a company is not gouging, gouging people. the consumer. Ex yeah, right. Exactly, and I think next time I'm going to a chain, possibly uh, Pep Boys. Very good. Yeah. Pep Boys, you they you are. like them? Yes, I do. Yeah. And the people are wonderful to work to work with. You know, when you yeah. repair or anything yeah. of your part, they don't they don't rip you off. They're fair and they're honest. Yeah. And uh, you know, yeah, it's, they're, they're just great. Yeah. And that what that's what makes you go back. This guy of yours, I will never go to, and yeah. I don't think you will anymore either. So uh, you've been messed up by this guy too much. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, right, thank you. We'll be much more next time. Bye bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we are back. We are back. Um, front and front. Side. Side. Dorsal. Di diagonally dorsal. Thank you, William H. Morrow III, for doing a very invigorating show with me and uh, promo. Great job. Um, and uh, I just want to say hello to my uh, very close and dear friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. <laughs> and, um, well, the Chisler's Hall of Shame. After, let's see, Chris Christie, of course, has a permanent uh, reclining chair mm -hmm. at the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh, Hobby Lobby is, uh, hereby inducted into the Chisler's Hall of Shame uh, concerning this whole ridiculous right-wing holy roller zealot fundamentalist evangelical crap. Hobby Lobby is coming to New Jersey. With the women's contraception issue. Um, you know, you know, um, the restaurant business, they're, they're sneaky, but they can't put anything past old James. They, it's not just the fact that some of them try to get their, their waiters and waitresses and wine service to pull their tips so they, of course they could steal mm. some of that tip money, right? Not only that, but like this one place, Segovia. All right, it's the oldest Spanish and Portuguese um, restaurant in New Jersey, and they, they they give you great portions. Okay, uh, they could give they could have gave me more shrimp, 
all right like the Chinese takeouts they will give you more shrimp but it was it was more than adequate it was good wasn't worth the price they tend to be pricey right? all European restaurants are pricey because they think they're better than the rest of the world because they're Europe European and they're Caucasian they just have this elitist uh, mindset that was passed on to America to America America now they they gave us a platter of um, steamed vegetables or sauteed vegetables and I noticed there wasn't there was very little squash you know zucchini broccoli uh, green beans and other things there but there was a, a large amount of carrots and when you buy mixed vegetables in a supermarket they will give you more carrots than anything else why why I'll tell you why because carrots are cheap filler just like potatoes and white rice are cheap filler. That's why I never order a burrito. It's loaded with white rice. So they give you all these carrots. And even my sister agreed with me. I was showing her. And uh, the average person is not going to even notice. Or, you know, I mean, there are little tricks that they use to save money, on, you know, increase their profits. Like, for example, when my sister put in the order, okay. She ordered uh, deep sea broiled scallops, okay, cooked in butter and wine. Um, my mom had a uh, lobster tail, and they, they served the uh, saffron rice on the side. She had lobster tail. She ordered, my sister ordered a platter of uh, stuffed clams, uh, oreganata, which are the uh, little neck clams, the smaller ones. They were good. Uh, lobster was tender, lobster was great, um, but what they wanted to do with my sister's scallops, they wanted to mix them in with the rice, which means if they do that, they can, they can give my sister less scallops. She, she know, that when they mix everything in like a casserole, mm -hmm. you, you, there's no easy way to count your scallops. My sister says, no. I want my scallops in the original sautéed sauce that you're cooking them in. I don't want them thrown in with the yellow saffron rice and mixed into the rice. So they go, oh, okay, 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 oh, we'll okay, do that. Okay, okay, we'll do that, we'll do that. You know, and of course, you know, they want to throw it all together so they can stiff you on the scallops. A lot of tricks that restaurants uh, pull in our uh, capitalist society so I will be I will not put I will not induct Segovia into the Chisler's Hall of Shame because there's a lot I like about them uh, I just wanted to uh, explain in detail all the tricks that restaurants in America pull especially pricey European restaurants Okay, which I will induct all of them collectively into the Chisler's Hall of Shame because they chisel you. They chisel you. Uh, I'm not saying that other restaurants of other cultures won't chisel you, but uh, I've had it happen to me in, in, in an Indian restaurant a couple times. Uh, they're chiselers too, you know, with the small portions and everything. But uh, thank God I'm a great cook. And, you know, I can prepare meals very well and I can get my portions but I do appreciate a big portion that's why I like buffets like the flaming grill buffet in East Rutherford New Jersey on Route 17 uh, South where I took uh, uh, Paul Terrace Wokowinski the king of clubs and uh, Mario Petrus the personal trainer to the stars as well as myself and, and other friends. Anyway, let us sink our teeth back into these readings. Our piranha teeth. The Supreme Court's decision 
to allow employers to deny access to some family planning services through employer provided health insurance based on a claim of personal religious objection to contraception deserves condemnation. Sure. The Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act requires that private health insurance coverage include such access in any standard package of benefits. No religion on this planet has been able to prove that their religion is factual, is based on facts, and that they, their God exists. No religion has been able to prove it, therefore it holds no weight. It should hold no weight in, um, in well, politics. The, Supreme, the, uh, the First Amendment says that. Oh, I forgot to induct the most important uh, 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 entities into the Chisler's Hall of Shame, and that is the the modern-day monarchy known as the U.S. Supreme Court. Those, uh, what are they, five, uh, five Roman, Roman... conservative idiots. Five Roman Catholic conservative idiots. Well, I don't know if they're all Roman Catholic. Well, whatever. I know that Clarence Thomas is, Antonin Scalia is, and the uh, 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 Anthony Kennedy is. What's his name? Kennedy? Anthony Kennedy. Anthony Kennedy, and of course, uh, I want to salute Ruth Bader Ginsburg for being the voice of reason. All right, continue. You see how a voice of reason can be voted down, out. Yeah, because they're appointed for life, right? Yes, they're appointed for life, but that has nothing to do with it, I'm saying. Yeah, well... This is what happens if you read the history of the 1890s and the 1900s of this country, the progressive movement, and see what happened to them, you'll understand. The socialists were just thrown out of existence because they were called commies. I am sure that, the, well, hey, Karl Marx wanted a fair system where everyone shared in the wealth. I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, I'm sure many people will eagerly want to interview uh, and do a show with Ruth Bader. I doubt it. This will be over in no time. You'll doubt it? it all Why over. do you doubt it? Because Citizens United hey, and the if company, I, if they're I was, all blown over. I don't care. If, Ruth Bader, if I was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I Please. would go to the media and grant interviews with all progressives that want to interview me. I would go on MSNBC. Well, if I'm a she's fighter. So stinking smart. Why didn't she tell Mr. Justice Samuel Alito there is no precedent for corporations being people? Because he said that corporations are people. There is no precedent in law for that. There is a head note by a corrupt law clerk. So, on a railroad case, so, which had nothing to do. So corporations are people uh, due to a, a, a corrupt influence. The, the law That's was correct, but there is no precedent law. There's no case mm -hmm. that is a precedent. But there are cases that came afterward, which they justified on the precedent which did not exist. Right. Okay? So why isn't Ms. Ruth Bader Ginsburg pointing that up to Mr. Alito, which obviously he doesn't know about? Well, maybe, maybe uh, if Ruth Bader Ginsburg has a personal Facebook page, maybe you or I should post that there to help her. Well, she should know it, shouldn't she? Yes. Oh, thank you. I mean, there are things that persons that we call intelligent should know. In instead of uh, uh, humble little people like us bringing it, to bringing it to their attention, and they're they're in a position of high authority, and they should already know this. All right. Especially in law, We're they're lawyers, they're judges. They're supposed to know this. 
they are supposed to know is they're lawyers and Supreme Court justices. You're right. You know, meanwhile you have humble little people like us reminding everyone. Contraceptive access for women, families, is a critical health and economic security issue. Yes, and it's part of a woman's gynecological health coverage. One that the National Council of Jewish Women fully supports. The court decision jeopardizes the basic protections of the new health care law, as well as those of many long-standing civil rights and labor laws affecting private employers. Candidates for public office, as well as elected officials, must distance themselves from the court decision. Our members, more than 1,000 women in Bergen County, we vote. Oh, the plutocrats are scared. Oh, they're scared they vote. Your money trumps your vote, lady. The oligarch states of America. Sometimes I wonder if the headline writers at the record, that's our local newspaper, bother to read the stories they try to encapsulate. The two reporters did a decent job of trying to present a variety of viewpoints on the case. The headline reveals nothing more clearly than the media's position that free contraception for employees is the only point about this case. Wrong. The case was about religious freedom. Will the government or private citizens who take religion seriously and try to live by its teaching in both private and public lives, be the ones to decide whether conscience is violated. The court ruled that private citizens are the ones who get to decide. But someone waiting for a headline like conscience rights upheld will have a long wait. I do not normally give a great deal of thought to matters of corporate religious beliefs. But now that I have thought, at least for a few minutes, I believe that religious consideration should be given only to those individuals who can actually stand or sit and sing the hymns. I do not think a corporate charter can do that. No. And I don't think there's anything in the Bible that tells people they need to sing hymns. I think that's man-made. What do you think? They did sing hymns. The, uh, origin, the They church, sing hymns? The Church of God they did, did sing, sing hymns? hymns. But remember, the true church it's not a building. They met in houses. Or, or wherever they chose to meet. That's good. Wherever two or more of you shall gather, I shall be there. So it's like a Bible study Jesus group. Jesus said. It's like a Bible study group. Of, well, there was no Bible, but I'm saying it was, it was a group. It was a group. Well, there was a Bible. I mean... Isaiah goes back a thousand years. BC or whatever the hell it is, you know? And Moses, of course, the first five books of the Bible. Yeah, with Abraham and all them yeah. heavy hitters of the Old Testament. Well, Abraham didn't write anything. Moses wrote the first five, four Jacob, five books. Jacob. He didn't write nothing either. Jacob, which was the name was changed to Israel, right? That's correct. And, uh... Let the, let my name be upon them. Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's sons, Israel put his name on them. 
Yeah. Um, Israel. That guy, there you uh, go. Um, that, uh, oh, man. Who's that guy again? What guy? Um. Uh, anyway, the, the, anyway. The, the one where they uh, God allowed the devil to take everything away from him. Job. Job. Yeah, Job. Job. He was tested because he was self-righteous, as are all your Republican Christians today. They are self-righteous. Okay. Oh, they're very self-righteous, and they're, and they're clueless, too. Well, that's called Revelation 12, 9, being deceived, isn't it? Yeah, and even even, even worse, I mean, look, they're deceived, and they're, at least they're smart enough to know how to rip everybody off and be crooks and be rich, but they, what about the, the poor slobs that vote for them? The uh, tea baggers from all those uh, red red states. Well, my, what's, what's they're their deceived, excuse? aren't they? Huh? They're deceived too, aren't they? They don't have a pot to piss in, and they're uh, yeah. they're voting for for the party of the rich. Wolf County in Kentucky is a great example. They don't have a pot to piss in, and they vote Republican, right? That's correct. Was that uh, McConnell country? McConnell country, baby. What a bunch of stupid ass! But yeah, somebody posted something uh, in on YouTube uh, under one of our shows. Some woman, when we were talking, we were talking about uh, false counterfeit Christianity, uh -huh. and and she and she posts something really stupid. I, like, she got mad. She says, uh, "What do you mean Jesus was killed on the cross?" Well, that's irrelevant. What does that have to do with? false counterfeit Christianity. Well, they like to blame the Jews for killing him. But, Je but Jesus had a mission. You know what I mean? He, he, he did it. They were all guilty. He allowed all this for a purpose. He could have escaped. No kidding. If he wanted to. He could have smited them. They do not understand. With the help of God. They do not understand that the God who became Jesus gave up his divinity to do that. They are unaware of that. They are unaware that the rapture will only include 144,000, not millions, or even billions. Only 144,000, that is true. People. But, but I mean, J uh, Jesus, uh, being that he was able to perform many miracles, that also gave him the power to avoid the crucifixion, which he did not. He, well, he, he came not. to a point where he did ask the Father to take the cup away from him. But then he said, not my will, well, when he was on, but your will. When he was on trial and Pontius Pilate was there, Jesus could have whipped up a lot of miracles right in front of everybody. Well, of course. He could have done not that. His, uh, that was not what he was there for. No, he was there to make that ultimate sacrifice. But, you know, th these people, these uh, zealots, evangelical zealots, are clueless about what is really in the Bible, and they, they're not rich, they're poor. So, mm -hmm. they are spellbound by this cult. That's why they vote Republican. Like well, the, I say so many times, you know, they figure they don't have that another choice because those damn Democrats are baby killers and secular humanists. Yeah, yada yada. Atheist, yada. Atheists, et cetera, et cetera. Right, the fertilized egg is a human, yeah, the embryos are human. Shebang. What's next? Uh, 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 you're killing sperm if you if you jerk off into into, oh, yes. into a tissue or, yes. or a toilet bowl. Absolutely. You're murdering spawning. And you're preventing a, zoom, a zoom? spermatozoon from penetrating an ovum. Okay? Yeah, and you're murdering sperm. Yeah, sure. Well, the sperm don't matter. It's the coming together. As they say, 
life begins at con at, at conception. That's what they say. Not with the sperm or the ovum alone. Oh, really? See. So all when they come together. So what? What is going to happen when all these illegitimate uh, uh, babies out of wedlock, all these women, they get knocked up, <gasps> and they and they're forced to give birth to all these extra babies? Who's going to take care of them? Oh. Gee whiz. Without without contraception and ab an abortion, who's going to take care of all these millions of extra babies? Certainly not Republicans. Are the Republicans going to pay, they pay the child support? They will cut. They have cut WIC. They cut food stamps. They, there's 18 million children in this country who are hungry every day. Yeah, in a <laughs> 18 in a, million in a first world country like the United States. Well, that's because that's a myth. The United States is not first in anything except people in prison. Free, free slave labor in privatized prisons, yeah. Okay. Well, they don't, um, they don't, they don't think and look long term, conservatives, do they? Yeah. And anything that disagrees with them, they say, it's not true, it's, it's political, it's, it's, it's not independent, it's just that. They just dismiss it. Prove it. Prove all things, they Republicans. They just dismiss it. Okay. They can't prove anything, these Republicans. They have no fact to back up anything they say. You know, but anyway, continue. Changing the... the milieu here a little bit. All right. I just found out that my husband of 30 years is having an affair. Was this that dear Abby again? Dear Abby. When I confronted him, he said, I have a girlfriend. Ooh. I can't imagine the rest of my life without girlfriends, so get over it. Then why did he get married? Why did he bother to get married then? Then... He wants an open relationship. Yeah. He told me he has never been faithful, but that he loves me and would be devastated if I left. Oh my God! This guy's bonkers. He considers his fooling around to be safe and harmless escapades. He's a hypocrite. He's a like a Republican. He's a hypocrite. <laughs> my heart is broken. He has flaunted this woman in my face. Oh my God! And embarrassed and humiliated me in public. Oh boy! Get rid of this bum. Now he's angry with me because I told her husband what is going on. Good. Good for her. How do I find the strength and the courage to leave? Just leave, you dummy. You know, I'm starting to blame the women for this, that, that stay in these relationships. I have some health issues and haven't worked in years. What do I tell our kids? <laughs> the world is crashing down around my ears. My world is crashing down. Help. Hold on. Help me. Just leave him. He's a screwball. He's uh, he's uh, uh, creating tremendous emotional ab abuse on you. He's just playing out plain loony and nuts, just get rid of this, this bum, unload him. Uh, dear Abby's uh, answer, your husband's escapades are neither safe nor harmless to you. His behavior is callous, hurtful, and disrespectful. It's very important that you remain calm and do nothing in haste. You will be better able to weigh your options if you talk to an attorney, find out what you're entitled to after having been married to this man for 30 years. 30 years, and he decides to do this? If you feel it would be helpful, find a licensed counselor to talk to. He's, he's flaunting the other woman in front of his wife. Why did he bother to get married? 
I don't understand it. I don't understand. And this may not be, of course, the first time. He, he sounds like what he said there. I've had girlfriends. Well, that means he, he was cheating yeah. on her from... Exactly. Maybe from day one. From day one. And he just decided in his uh, older years, in, in, in during his male menopause, to start flaunting it in front of her face and becoming cruel by doing so. Very selfish individual. The California Highway Patrol Chips said on Friday it is investigating a video of one of its officers straddling a woman head as she lay on the shoulder of a freeway. The woman had been walking on Interstate 10 west of downtown Los Angeles, endangering herself and people in traffic, and the officer was trying to restrain her. Chip Assistant Chief Chris O'Quinn said at a news conference, Passing driver David Diaz recorded the Tuesday incident and provided it to local television stations. Good for him. I believe it was on Facebook. Good for him. Another whistleblowing hero. The officer is, an, is on administrative leave while the patrol investigates. He has not been identified. O'Quinn said the woman, who would not give her name, was uninjured. This, uh, that must mean the guy had a lousy punch. <laughs> if she's uninjured? Yeah, well, um... I've seen, a, I've seen a, on Facebook where these two women were fighting each other. Man, they, the one's face was really, you know, messed up from the, the, the woman beating on her. Yeah. The one where the kid was, uh, the kid was trying to... Yes. Yeah. Yes. That one. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have I salute the invention of the smartphone with their wonderful high quality, high megapixel videos, video capabilities. It's 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 bringing a lot of he heroic whistleblowers to come forward. You know. Yeah. Well, of course, the uh, police uh, oh, uh, are making it so that they. You can't do that anymore. They'll come right in your house and take your camera or throw it on the floor. And but you it. can't. You can't. You can't blatantly do it so they can see you do it. Oh well, yeah. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, well, you know, but it's they're worth, not supposed to do that in the first. Place. You know, it's you know, it's just as bad, or if not worse, than this story. I saw a video of uh, uh, recently of uh, police officers. Uh, I'm not positive what state, but. It shows the police officers uh, reprimanding a, uh, uh, a disabled man in, a, in his electronic uh, wheelchair and one of the officers knocked looked like he knocked the, the wheelchair over and said, oh, that's it, we're arresting you. And the guy is like scared out of his mind. He's, 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 they were bullying a handicapped man. Hey, they what they, they killed an 86-year-old man the other day. Because he didn't want to go to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That was the, v uh, I'm sorry, World War II veteran. veteran. That was Chicago. Yeah, that's right. I think that was the Chicago police. Uh, yeah, he refused to go to the hospital and they just blew him away. That's right. They blow away your dogs, too. For no no good reason. No apparent reason, no. Based on what they perceive. Yep. And a, uh, and a, and a tough dog. Uh, Defending the territory of your home is doing his job, as far as I'm concerned. The woman is undergoing psychiatric evaluation. He said the officer was answering a report of a pedestrian on the freeway. When he found the woman, she started walking down an off-ramp, then turned around. 
walked back onto the freeway and started wandering into lanes. Ugh. O'Quinn said that's when the incident occurred. That's not good. O'Quinn said the video only shows a small part of what transpired. Mm. Diaz told the Associated Press in a phone interview Friday that he arrived when the woman was walking off the freeway and that she turned around only after the officer shouted something to her. He agitated the situation more than helped it, said Diaz, mm. who started filming soon after. When the video begins, the officer is already on top of the woman and delivering blows. She can be seen wriggling and trying to sit up. Why doesn't he just uh, subdue her and put the handcuffs on it? Then a man in plain clothes, later identified by O'Quinn, as an off-duty law enforcement officer appears and helps the officer handcuff the woman. O'Quinn said he could not say what prompted the officer to act as he did, but that California Highway Patrol officers have a heightened sense of the dangers of being on the freeway compared with a citizen. Well, yeah, the freeways are kind of nuts. Who is not accustomed to the speed and conditions, especially outside of a car. Yeah. The most dangerous thing that we face is traffic, O'Quinn said. Diaz, a Los Angeles native who now lives in West L.A., said the scuffle was not unusual for him. But the location was. I've seen plenty of things like that, but not on the freeway. Yeah, there's a lot of witnesses on the freeway, too. But then again, if somebody is, uh, what's the term, jaywalking? Or oh, they grab you now for jaywalking. Well, you, you, you can cause a serious accident if you do that. Mr. La Follette, Mr. Uh, a socialist back in the day, was put in jail for 10 years under the Espionage Act for being a dissident. Yeah, what did, what did he do to warrant that? Speaking against the United States in World War I? Yeah, it's kind of kind of touchy situation touchy situation uh, if the United States is at war and they want to if you do they want that. to try Mr. Snowden under the Espionage Act yeah. of 1917 okay yeah. they like want to silence silence you any form of dissent against the big boys and girls what if what if the big boys and girls are are uh, lying and, and evil in their intent? They so, do that anyway. So uh, they don't want anybody reminding them that they're evil and greedy and... Uh, or telling others. And exploiting the mainstream. That's correct. So they want to continue doing their, their dirty deeds. Well, of course. Nice. And every now and then they get the law on their side and they get away with it. Like in those days. And today. Under the National Defense Authorization Act. So what's the difference between this system now and uh, the old uh, monarchies of, uh, of uh, hundreds of years ago? I don't see any difference. Well, if you if you count the monarchy Feudalism. as a corporation, then it's the same. But mm. we are ruled today by corporations and the plutocrats, not a king, mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. the biggest evidence okay. uh, to support that the two-party system is no good is 
is when Barack Obama signed the Monsanto Protection Act. And why, why does the an evil frackers company, yeah. go around offering $50,000 to anybody that they want to frack on their land and then when they sign the uh, agreement it says you can't say nothing if anything goes wrong and you can't sue us and you can't this and you can't that and you can't this and you can't that yeah wh while they destroy and people are taking the 50,000 while they destroy America's that's landscape good. that's good people what do you mean landscape water poisoning the water well, they're taking the 50 grand because then that makes them just as bad as any other corrupt politician taking a bribe. It's still a bribe. Well, right? It's a sellout, even though it's only 50 grand. And they made it so that the people are poor enough to have to take it. They, 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 they exploit the desperation of the poor. That's great. That's how they get people to work for cheap ass chicken feed That's wages. That's correct. That's correct. That's what they want to continue doing. And now they have an even 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 better scam, uh, uh, and that is arresting people for frivolous reasons and making them work for free in privatized prisons. Absolutely. It's cheaper than outsourcing. Absolutely. If they're paying some poor slob in a third world country uh, 15 cents an hour or 32 cents an hour, well, they can get a, a, an inmate to do work for free. And I had a little, uh, I bucked heads with Billy Morrow a little bit one time. He, said, he says that inmates should earn their keep. Oh, their keep. I said, oh, gee, they're, sh they're sure reminds, living in a lap of luxury. That reminds me of the thing that they, they, these conservatives always put up there. I don't want my tax money paying for some lazy bum on welfare. Lazy bum. Yeah, meaning lazy meaning bum. that there, there's no problem with the economy and there's no lack of jobs. They're just lazy bums. They're just lazy bums. That's correct. Not even knowing, realizing that there's no jobs out there. But anybody who was honest about that would not say that first. They would say, I don't want my tax money going to Exxon Mobil for subsidies. That's first. Well, then later on, if you have a problem, you may worry about people on welfare and stuff. But until you direct your attack and your challenges to those big boys who are taking the tax money, I might say Wall Street also, you are nothing but a hypocrite. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, direct your attack to the real culprits. That's correct. Uh, Teabaggers. Not, do not wage war against the poor. Wage war against the elitists that are simply not paying taxes. You know? Yeah. It's not a spending problem, it's it's a lack of revenue Correct. problem. Correct. For years and years and years, we've been knocking it down and down and down, and it don't pay nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is it, like 60% or something of, of uh, corporations don't, or don't pay any taxes at all? That's true. Come on, man. You know, uh, uh, if you're making profits, you got to be paying taxes. Boeing... Um, what are these companies? GE! Or Verizon, Boeing, GE. All of them. All of them, all of them, not just them, all of them. So many are not paying taxes. Right. And they're getting corporate welfare on top of that, which they, they uh, cleverly call a subsidy, hmm. which is it's still a handout. Why does a wealthy person need a handout, period? They don't, but they, they don't. get it. They don't, but they get it because they're paying bribes to the Congress and the Senate to to do things their way. To do things their way. That's correct. You know, they say, you know, they'll, tell, they'll say say to somebody, "What's your price? Make it happen. Make it happen our or our way, and we will take care of you." That's what they do. How are we doing on the? Oh, 
time to say bye bye. Yeah, because if we start, if we start this one here, we're really not finished. All right, next That's week. Then. Okay, thank you for joining us for this week's uh, uncensored, hard hitting uh -oh. truth. And we will see you next time. It's just amazing how fast these weeks fly by. And uh, hopefully, we'll have some, some more positive things to say. But I doubt it. That the, the big positive thing is that Russia will continue Nikola Tesla's work. And the bad. With the Warden Cliff Tower? And, and the, right, the Warden Cliff Tower. But, but the bad news is all involving the United States, the uh, the oligarch states of America, there is nothing positive happening here, which does not surprise me. All right, say so long to these people. So long, people. This has been a Megalife 21 production.